Hey y'all, I'm Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. and welcome back to another resin video. So today I have a fun layering project for you, a ring cone. Now these cones are so much fun. I'm sure you've seen them. They're great for rings. They're great for memory things. Um, and what I mean by that is if you say go to the beach and you get some sand and you're not sure what to do with it, or you have some petals from a bouquet or a flower from a bouquet and you're not sure what to do with it, this is a great solution to encase those items in resin, keep them preserved and have a fun but functional piece that you can use all the time. You can use it in your bathroom to hold your rings when you're taking a shower or washing your hands. You can use it, you know, in the kitchen by the sink when you're washing dishes. So it's a really fun one. Um, but unless you're just going to do your items, say you have a flower at the bottom with clear resin, it is also a layering project, which means one, two, three, four layers means at least two or three days, unless you are going to do very quick layers that will blend together. So we're gonna go over all of that, starting with our first pour, and I will walk you through the entire process. I have two ring cones here, just to kind of show you the difference. Don't worry, I will give you a close up of them later. But today we are pouring the larger ring cone with this fun geometric like diamond shape at the bottom. I'm very excited about it. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, mix our resin. All right, y'all, so we are going to start by mixing our resin. I've already poured it into one of our mixing bowls, mixing cups. This is a thick set epoxy by Total Boat, and it is a deep pour epoxy because I'm mixing several pieces, and I want to be bubble free. And you can make your pieces, um, any of these really, with either the deep pour or maker epoxy, depending on how many layers you want to do. So if you are looking to do one layer, the thick set here that can be poured up to two inches deep at a time is perfect. If you don't mind doing two layers, then the maker epoxy, um, which is a one to one ratio is perfect. So this is a three to one ratio, which means of the thousand liters I'm mixing, I did 750 of the A and 250 of the B. For the maker epoxy, Here's that. It is a one to one ratio, which means one part A, one part B, 50 50. Either way, we're going to mix our resin according to the instructions. So for thick set, that is three minutes in one cup, three minutes in the next. Then we will add our colorants. And I find that if you're mixing several pieces, making several pieces, it's easier to make one big batch of resin and then separate it out in smaller cups according to what colors you're looking for than to mix each color individually. So for this very first basic piece that we're going to do, we are just going to use these amazing iridescent flakes. They're fabulous. They stay suspended. They look great. They're a very easy beginner level material that gives you a lot of bang for your buck. They look amazing. All right, so we're gonna do the top layer of our um, ring cone here. A little bit of these iridescent flakes. We're just gonna put them in and then we'll let it cure before we do the next layer. Oh, that's good. Don't need much for that bottom layer, just enough. So go ahead, <coughs> pop those bubbles. And now we will come back to this guy after about 24 hours. We want a really harsh line between the first and second layers. If you want a um, less harsh line, you can come back after four to six hours. You want them to start swirling together, pour in an hour. Yeah. All right, so this guy is cured. So we are ready to pour our next layer. And so for our next layer, I have two colors. I have a light blue 
and a dark blue. And we are going to pour these one and then the other so you can see how they mix together. So I'm gonna start with our light blue. I typically like to go light to dark when I pour these cones, unless I am using leftover resin, which is what these are. These are from another project, a little seascape ocean whale that I'm working on. Um, and I don't have a say in the colors, but for these I did, I did plan these to go together. So go ahead and pop those bubbles. And now you'll see when we pour this darker color into the lighter color that they will react. Not in a chemical sense, but they'll start to see mix together, create a new pattern or a new color. They will blend, they will not be harsh edges. Putting that darker blue all over. And then we'll do a third layer. Once this is completely cured, that will give us another harsh edge. So since this layer was so thin, we probably don't need to wait a full um, 24 to 48 hours. We'll probably give this about six hours and then come back and pour another layer. Maybe one more, maybe two, we'll see. We'll see, because this uh, this bottom part here is definitely going to be the most, um, take the most re resin. So, all right, be back. All right, so I've got our next layer and it is that dark color. Again, we're going to do a second layer of this so that we can see if there's a really big difference between the light and dark layer we poured yesterday and the harsh line for what we're going to pour now. And then we will do a, a fourth layer after this. All right. This is going to be a thicker layer, so I'm just trying to pop any bubbles that come to the top before I pour this in. This is about 50 milliliters, so let's see how far 50 goes. It might be too much. It's windy today. bubbles. Right, we're doing pretty good. 50 hasn't taken us to the top. So we'll still have room for our last layer. I would say we need between 30 and 50 milliliters left for this last thickest part. So. Let me go ahead and let this cure for a couple hours and then we will, we will pour the last layer, okay? See y'all then. All right, so for our last layer, I've got a dark blue mica powder, 
and I'm going to add a bit of this uh, crushed glass. I think that would be a nice weight for the bottom to counteract the iridescent flakes we put in the top. We'll see. Let's see if that's enough once we mix this up. We might need more. We might, well, we might need less, but that's not an option. I feel like more is always best. <laughs> definitely not a minimalist. If you are looking for a minimalist channel, keep looking. We are maximalists here. Definitely need some more glass for it to show up. Because we're using a darker mica powder. Mica powder. Mica powder. I had a feeling that was going to be the case. There we go. That's nice and crunchy. I want to be able to still see the mirrored pieces through that dark pigment. And of course they'd be more visible in a clear, but I want it to be a darker base. So Let's go ahead and pop these bubbles here. Sometimes when it's really bubbling like this, and it's doing it because it's actually quite cold right now. I'll let it sit for a little bit to settle and then pour it, but I actually already let it sit for about five minutes, which is why the bubbles are now coming to the top. That's okay, just be patient. Keep sitting and watching, and if I need to let it sit for another couple minutes, I can. You don't want to let it sit for so long that it cures in the cup. It's always best to pour your, your resin at room temperature, but when you're working outside, of course, that's not an option. So I keep my, my resin indoors where it's room temperature, bring it outside right before it's time to pour. It's still going to react but not nearly as much as if you kept it in a place where the entire bottle could become cold. Now, on the other hand, if your resin is cold and you need to warm it up to room temperature, go ahead and get a little bit of um, water, warm water, set your entire bottle of resin down in the water and let it heat up slowly. All of our uh, fancy rocks are staying in the bucket. It's all right, they'll come out eventually. Just might need to help them. Problem is, we're going to have to push these to the outside a little bit because if they're just all in the middle, y'all, we won't see them. I'll just cure in the resin forever.
I'm going to go ahead. and use the small side of my spatula to scoot those rocks over away from the middle towards the outsides as much as possible. the resin out so that it doesn't overflow as easy. There we go. Let this cure. And while I could easily take the resin I took out and put it back in, instead I am going to fill the rest of this with rocks so that we have more rocks. They're just going to go in the middle. We're just wasting rocks. It's fine. It's all fine. At least that helped probably push some of the other rocks outwards. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Who knows? Either way, we're going to go ahead and let this cure and then we will unmold it after 24 hours. See you then. All right, so we're going to start pulling the silicone away and then pulling it down. I find with these it's easiest. You can kind of get the edge to roll over. Perfect. Oh, you can see the rocks. Good. I was so worried they were all going to be inside. Oh, that's cute. Okay, keep going. Keep going. Pull it all the way up and off. Oh, this guy is giving me a run for my money. Can't. Move it and then just keep twisting until you have enough air. There we go. Oh, that's cute. Okay, so we've got our top layer. Then the second and third layer where we poured the light and dark colors at the same time, you can see where they mixed. Then where we came in with that same dark color the next day. And then finally finished off with the blue and our mirrored glass. I'm glad we did the mirrored glass. I was starting to think it was overkill, but I think it needed a little bit to pull it together. That is so cute and I love how it's all the way up. Of course, there are a million different ways and designs and colors you can make a ring cone with, but I really like the design of this one. That extra bit at the base just gives it a little bit of oomph. So this is a just solid straight ring cone. You can see the difference. I try to um, mirror the colors here. So we have the same flakes. We have the same two colors mixed. And then I did a clear and the dark on the bottom as opposed to the two colors, the dark and the blue. So together they make a pretty little pair i love it i hope you guys liked this project if you did like comment subscribe show your friends tell your mom and we'll see you in the next project bye <laughs>